it is a great way to improve your odds of success when you go into a franchise because you get all of that institutional knowledge that was there prior to uh, your first location. What is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amuse-bouge. Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to The Perfect Bites, episode 80. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and today we're talking about a team lunch at Biscuits and Bourbon. Next, we're welcoming a guest, Andy Cal, the owner of Slater's 5050 Las Vegas. And finally, we'll share the benefits of a digital detox. So each week on The Perfect Bite, we'll visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant that we hope will become your new favorite. And this week we're sharing a new place that I've had on my list for probably a year, right, Crystal? Biscuits and Bourbon. I'm like, I'm going to make it to Henderson. (laughs) Water Street is just about as far away from where I live as possible, but I really wanted to try this place. It's been recommended to me by several people. And so on their website, it says, we're a startup restaurant group made up of Henderson natives and locals in pursuit of the dream to revitalize Water Street. Our vision is to restore the area to its former glory by creating quality establishments that would strengthen the community. We chose to build bars and restaurants because historically, those are the establishments that people from all walks of life congregate at to find camaraderie, commonality, and community. And I thought that was just really inspiring. It's like, it's a restaurant, (laughs) but no, it's a lot more than that, right? You get that feeling. I think Mm -hmm. the whole Water Street in general has been under like reconstruction and revamping Mm -hmm. and getting back to that old feeling of like kind of like a main street Mm -hmm. and you definitely get those vibes when you go into this uh biscuits and yeah like while i was looking for a parking spot this old timey fire truck with a a christmas you know before christmas christmas wreath wreath on it drove by me there are people walking everywhere you know coming from their offices walking to their lunch just it did feel like a community it was it was great and so we did go with some co-workers and and one of our vendors had taken us to lunch and we just wanted to try everything because we knew we wanted to talk about on the podcast and so we did order a lot and so (laughs) just about everything so of course we had to try the biscuits uh they do a biscuit bundle in three six or nine you know we got nine um and we got flavored honey jam and butters they're served warm they were i felt the perfect amount of crumbly deliciousness um there were all different types of of jams there was like a honey butter do you remember there was like a apple jam raspberry i don't all even different know the, the different types yeah. of, of jams but there was yeah so many different options and i think i tried almost every single one and every single one it was like just good in its own different little way mm. yeah someone else Biscuits got those nice leftovers i was i was sad i was like <laughs> i'll eat those tomorrow we ordered pork rinds served with a dill pickle dipping sauce i had actually never had pork rinds so mm. i thought they were they were kind of hard to eat they're really really crunchy but they were good fried green tomatoes mac and cheese with brisket and we had it with something else was it plain there were two mac and cheese they both that had we got. a different meat but i i couldn't tell you what the other meat was mm. okay I didn't eat it because of cheese, but they looked really good. And then smoked wings and candied pork belly with cherry mustard jam and pickled onions, which was my favorite one. Did you have a favorite? I really liked the fried green tomatoes. Uh, That was my first time having them. It always sounded like not a good combination Mm -hmm. to me, but whatever they dipped those in, they were just like great. I probably could have ate two appetizer trays all on my own and called it a day. And they had a sauce too, I think. It did. Yeah, everything was, has like a accompanying dressing or sauce. Yes. It was really good. So we were probably almost full by then, but we pressed on. <laughs> we <laughs> ordered main entrees as well. Um, I got the smoked tri-tip sandwich and it has arugula mixed with chimichurri sauce, which I always wanted more. I want more mm-hmm. chimichurri on that. But if you haven't had it, it's a sauce usually from like Argentina or Uruguay and it's usually with grilled meats. My brother lived in Argentina for a while and he came home just like loving this sauce and making it. And so I, for years, um, it is pretty easy to put together. There's lots of different versions, but it's like fresh parsley, garlic, sometimes chilies, olive oil and vinegar. So it's kind of a 
really just like a topping that they do all the time on on different meats. But this was on um, the tri-tip sandwich, which was really good. Mm-hmm. I think I've just decided like steak sandwiches are, are hard to eat. Like I want to cut the pieces. Yeah. Like it's hard for me tough. to bite. Yeah. So I actually took my leftovers and took the tri-tip and put it in a, a noodle dish the next day I did oh. a udon noodle for, okay. for leftovers and it was delicious. So I'm just weird about stuff like that. The food was really good though. I liked the flavor. It was very good. They have like a smoker on site. They're making a lot of their own smoked meats and things. So what did you get again for your, your main? I ordered the pulled pork plate. So not the sandwich version of it. And then it came with sides. I did, um, it was like a street corn and baked beans and I was so full from all of the appetizers (laughs) that we had. I didn't really get to dive into it. So I took it home. And then that night for dinner, I I finished it off. So it was delicious. Yeah, very healthy portions, right, of everything that we got. I think my recommendations for when you go is maybe go early for good parking. I did get a park on the street. I was kind of nervous about, Mm. I don't know, downtown Henderson very well. So, But there's also parking in the back. And the spots say reserved for the brewery next door or biscuits and bourbon. So there was quite a bit of parking. I think other restaurants don't have as much no, parking as don't. this location. So that was kind of nice. Next time I'm going all in on the breakfast foods, I think biscuits with eggs would be great. And they also have a brisket potato hash. It has several of my favorite foods, pickled onions, chimichurri, and breakfast potatoes. Or there was a biscuit sandwich with pork belly, which was my favorite appetizer. So it's the biscuit, pork belly, egg, and cheese. I will definitely uh, be coming back to Water Street, not only to try biscuits and bourbon again, but there's just so many other new restaurants down there. So if you have a recommendation, especially in Old Henderson or anywhere for us to try, let us know at the Perfect Bite at ccculv.com. We are always open to new ideas. As some of you know, every fifth episode, we invite a guest to join us on the podcast. And today we're welcoming Andy Cow, the co-owner of Slater's 5050 Las Vegas and proud member of Clark County Credit Union. His passion for food and creating unique experiences for guests has led to two highly successful locations in the Valley. Andy's restaurants have earned many accolades, including Best of Vegas, Best Burger Joint and Best Beer List, Yelp's Most Outrageous Milkshakes 2022, Food Insider's 50 State Favorite Burgers for Nevada, and in 2021, Andy's Secret Whale Burger won the Netflix Original Fresh, Fried, and Crispy. He worked for more than a decade in gaming and hospitality here in Las Vegas and brings his experience working with hundreds of restaurants across the USA to his current passion, Slater's 5050. We're excited to welcome Andy to our 80th episode. Thank you for joining The Perfect Bite. Anything else that you'd like to add about your background um, that led to your current role? I love food. <laughs> and so I've been a longtime listener of The Perfect Bite. So I'm very excited oh, to be here. You. Thanks for being here. Well, like Shannon mentioned, you're the owner, co-owner of Slater's 5050. You and your wife are the first franchisees and purchased um, the Vegas territory. Now, before we jump into the business side um, of our interview, can you share with our listeners who aren't familiar with your business, what is Slater's 5050 Las Vegas known for? So Slater's 5050, we're a family-friendly restaurant. We're known for our gourmet burgers, bacon in every single item on the menu, including Mm. our signature 50-50 burger, which is half bacon and half ground beef, and then our 50 craft beers on draft. And uh, like you mentioned earlier, our most famous item is our whale burger. So that's the one that won the Netflix series Fresh Fried and Crispy here in Vegas. That one's a pound of Australian Wagyu beef truffle cheese, tempera lobster, oh gold-dusted bacon. Yeah. Gold-dusted bacon? It, it is delicious. It's the most incredible <laughs> thing. Opulent. That yes. sounds so good, though. I didn't oh even, until you just said it, the 50-50. Okay, so, oh my gosh. Yeah. 50 bacon, 50 meat. Dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> 50 craft beer. It, it, it's my favorite item. So when you walk in, are you just like enshrouded in the bacon? Does it just feel like you're just... You know what I'm saying? Like, is it just the essence of, of when you walk in? <laughs> so every morning when I walk into our kitchen, we, we cook bacon fresh and it's just bacon aroma everywhere. <laughs> it, it's the best thing ever. So I used to work at a bakery when I was in high school and there was like some little thing came out. It's a top five things like to smell pe- that people like to smell. Mm. Cinnamon rolls. Yes. And bacon. Yes. And 
my friends would want to always smell me after I was working. <laughs> uh, so pe- people probably want to smell you. <laughs> yeah. After well, you're and in I there. think we should mention, so Andy brought us a gift today. And it is a Slater's Sizzling Bacon Candle, guys. Not available for sale. Not available for Sorry, sale. Maybe we shouldn't mention um, it. <laughs> But I know I think it's so cool. It's mm-hmm. from the Etsy shop, so you can do your research. Um, it's not edible, but it smells like bacon. So if you if you want to do some research, um, there is a bacon candle out there. <laughs> it's from Karaoke Candles. Karaoke Candles. Excellent. We'll put a link to that if you send Absolutely. us that. We'll put it in yeah. there. That'd be great. All right. So let's go back to the business side because you are a member of Clark County Credit Union. We have a commercial lending team and a for businesses as a business franchise owner, you know, you get that license to work here. Can you tell us a little bit about the location and and how you go about opening a franchise? Like what was your journey there to to become a franchise owner? Yeah. So uh, opening a franchise, uh, it's a great way for people to start a business because you have all of the things that the franchise learned prior to you mm. um, on day right. one. So for us, um, the brand sold millions of burgers over a decade. And when we first opened, we had all of that knowledge. So we didn't have to invent the stuff from the ground up. Okay. So it really improves your odds of success. Did you know about them? Like you'd you'd gone to a Slater's 5050 before and knew you wanted to open that? Or I'm jumping ahead probably, but... I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I have gone to one. Uh, I was a customer first. I loved the brand. And uh, when I moved back here to Las Vegas, I was looking for a family-friendly place uh, where I could take my kids, watch some sports, have mm-hmm. great craft beer, and mm-hmm. have sit-down service in a place that's in a neighborhood that I can access every single day. Um, there weren't many places here in town that kind of checks all those boxes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And so... I said to my wife that, you know, there's this great place we went to in Pasadena called Slater's 5050. I mm. love them. What if they were out here? And she said, well, why don't you call them? Oh. And so uh, out of the blue, we called them. And that's kind of how we became the first franchisees of the brand, just through that simple thought of wanting to bring something out here to Vegas. So you were not only first for Vegas, but first ever for first them. First ever, to- yes. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. Super cool. Um, so what what are some of the costs that co- go into starting a franchise and opening? And how, how did um, working with the credit union help you secure those funds? Yeah, so uh, there are three main costs to opening a franchise. Uh, typically, there is an initial franchise application fee. Depending on the franchise, that runs anywhere from twenty to a hundred thousand mm. dollars, and that mm. is so that the corporate team can send a team out and help you develop the brand, find the location, do some staff training. Sometimes you go out and train, so that's all wrapped up in there. Nice. Uh, the second thing is the build out cost and the initial startup cost of the actual business, and so for us, that's things like our fifty draft beer tower. This is qu- kitchen equipment, art in the restaurant, booths. Uh, staff training initially before we have any customers. So all of that um, are expenses that have to occur before we make our first dollar. And uh, that ranges anywhere from the low hundreds of thousands to the millions, depending Mm -hmm. on what that franchise is. Um, In a franchise system that runs a little bit more expensive because there are brand standards and they want to make sure that you're delivering a good product uh, that represents that brand. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then uh, finally, for a franchise, there's typically royalty fees. So this is a cut of the top line that goes back to the franchisor. Okay. Um, and this is for the rights to use their brand and all the menu items that they have. Mm-hmm. This typically runs somewhere 5 to 15%, also depending on the brand. Okay. Um, for us, uh, we had funded our first location through friends and family. And for the second location, we needed a loan. And... Uh, we needed a couple requirements in our loan, so we wanted to use the SBA 504 program, uh, which it's a very good program for small businesses to start up because they offer more favorable interest rates and terms. Mm. However, it's a lot of paperwork. It takes a long time to go through that process, mm-hmm. and many banks won't do it just due to the sheer volume of work it takes. Oh. And so our first criteria was finding a bank that would do it. Uh, secondly, we... We're applying for our very first commercial loan, so I knew I wanted somebody local, uh, somebody who understood the Las Vegas market. And so in interviewing a lot of banks here in town, uh, we found Clark County Credit Union. Uh, You guys were willing to work with smaller businesses. 
our banker, shout out to John Gentile here. Mm. He guided us through every single step of the process. I called him hundreds and hundreds of times <laughs> over the smallest questions. And uh, he was willing to make sure that we were successful and that I was comfortable in signing um, a loan this size. Nice. That's awesome. We are often on the top list for SBA lenders. And yeah. what we hear is that people have said that like, oh, the big bigger banks might not we do a lot of loans, but our like total dollar amount is smaller than some of the other lenders, but we're doing more. So that says to me, we're helping more small businesses get started that maybe other people don't want to work with. Touch. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. so it's just nice to hear because like we're local, we obviously love local food, we love local businesses. So to hear that that's exactly, you're the exact target that we're going for. So that's amazing. And, I mean, I wish I knew that when I first started and came mm-hmm. here directly. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had to interview a lot of banks. And, you know, part mm-hmm. of that helped us narrow down and really figure out who was right for us as yeah. a partner. Because our, our loan runs for a long time. And we want to make sure that we are together with somebody that will support us through that entirety. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I know I can speak personally. My husband and I often are like, we should open up a business. We have not the experience that, that you have at all, Andy, in, in the <laughs> industry. But I have, you know, just for fun, looked up different companies to look at their franchise fees and just it, it is kind of overwhelming. But there might be other listeners out there like me and my husband who dream about this. What have you learned from this experience that maybe you could pass on? Like if somebody was out there wanting to open a franchise and then maybe tell us your future plans after there's going to be more Slater 5050 <laughs> going. Two questions there. So two questions. Uh, the first on what I would recommend to others out there looking at a franchise, mm-hmm. it is a great way to improve your odds of success when you go into a franchise because you get all of that institutional knowledge that was there prior to uh, your first location. Um, You get a team that guides you uh, because your success is also their success. Um, However, that works both ways. And so with a franchise, you also don't have 100% control over everything that you do because Mm -hmm. it is a partnership with that franchisor. And so the first thing I would recommend is getting to really know the corporate team that operates the franchise, uh, making sure that they are going to be good partners um, and that you guys are on the same vision uh, for the term of the contract, which can run five to 10 years. So you you guys are really stuck together Mm -hmm. for a while. Um, Also talk to other locations and find out from them if they are happy with the way things are run, if they feel like it's growing, if they feel like they're getting support if their franchise royalty fees are being used to a way that helps them grow their business uh, profitably. A second thing I would recommend for folks looking at franchises is reading that franchise disclosure document. Uh, It is required by law to be provided to all franchise perspectives that are looking at the brand. It's a pretty big read, typically in the hundreds of pages. However, it does detail everything you need to know about the franchise, the way that you operate Uh, how much it costs to operate it, and all the potential pitfalls in that brand. And so um, understanding that and being comfortable with this is how the business will run in the future uh, is a very important part. And if someone's not comfortable with it, it's okay. You can walk away. Mm -hmm. Um, But Did you have assistance with going through that document? Like a lawyer? Yeah. (laughs) Uh, We did not. We should have had one. Um, But it was our very first one. And, you know, looking backwards, yes, I probably should have had someone help me look through it. And we did not. Did they create it for you? Or had they already been in the process of looking to franchise when you approached them? They were looking to start that process. And we were lucky that the stars aligned and we were able to hop on at that time. And then uh, last thing is, you know, really like what you do. We opened a bacon burgers and craft beer place. And so (laughs) I'm excited to go into our building every single day. (laughs) I'm sure. Some mornings I taste bacon. Some mornings I taste new beers. (laughs) It's rough, but somebody (laughs) has to do it. (laughs) And uh, we are looking to grow. Uh, We own the Territory Rights for Las Vegas. And so we want to keep it as a family company going forward. So we will be looking for a third location at some time. That's so cool. Um, so I, I suggest know. North Las Vegas. <laughs> yes, your next that would location. be a great location. And then there's Centennial. one here near our Tenea branch mm-hmm. on Lake Mead. So yeah, I'm I'm excited. I drive by there all the time. And yeah, that location is like perfect. A lot of other family oriented like destinations over there. Mm-hmm. There's like a huge park across the street. There's the high school down the road. 
Um, yeah, we are playing soccer there all the time right yeah. across. Mm-hmm. And the other location's in Henderson. Yeah, so right? our two locations, one is North Summerlin on Lake Mead and Buffalo, and then the second one is near the South Point, about five minutes east of it on Silverado Ranch and Bermuda. Okay. Excellent. Well, before you leave, Andy, we like to ask our guests two questions. The first is, what's a piece of financial advice that you'd give to someone that they could implement tomorrow for their future self? So most people, including myself, are never going to beat the guys on Wall Street picking stocks. Mm. Uh, They are very good at it, and uh, we probably don't do enough work in Mm -hmm. that. So instead of trying to find a needle in the haystack, buy the whole haystack. Okay. Um, <laughs> things like index funds, uh, such mm-hmm. as at the S and P, they are safe on the long term. They generate great returns, and it's a good bet for most people. Thank you. Yeah, I've definitely heard studies about that. That it's like the percentage of advisors that you know it's very difficult to do better than than index funds. So yep. I don't think I'm better than <laughs> no, no, no. than anyone else. So. <laughs> All right. And second question, when you're not at your own restaurant and you're not eating at Slater's 5050, what is a local restaurant that you love and what is your go-to dish that you order when you visit? So a great place that's open late, uh, typically after we close that I go hang out at is the Sparklings. They are on Rainbow Mm -hmm. in the southwest part of town. Beautiful restaurant. Uh, They make a spicy seafood pasta that I absolutely love. Oh. And then they have uh, meatballs that are made fresh in the restaurant. And those are to die for. The sparklings. Yeah. I've never heard of that. I have been there. I used to live right down there off like Rainbow, right? Or yes, Rainbow South Rainbow. And it's beautiful inside. Like you said, there's these like chandeliers and oh. just feels a little fancier. But it's it's you can just hang out. It's and, casual. Yeah, yeah casual. you never uh-huh. expect it for that part of town. Mm-hmm. And it's a great place to sit in the restaurant or they have a great bar as well. Man, I haven't been there in, in I I moved away from there about five years ago. So thank you. Like you said, sometimes this podcast will spark a little memory yeah. and you'll start to think of all the places that you love in town. So, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. It's been great to hear from one of our members and also just someone doing something that they enjoy. It's inspiring to hear that how much you love your job and that you can do it with your family and your wife is is really cool. So thank you for being here. Thank you guys so much for having me. Of course. Now we're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor. Clark County Credit Union members have received more than $73 million in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day. Since CCCU is owned by our account holders, they earn the dividend, not shareholders. This year, we returned a $2.6 million bonus dividend to members with auto loans, credit cards, and checking accounts. Open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend. Funds privately insured by American Share Insurance. Next up is our future self segment inspired by the happiness project. If you find yourself endlessly scrolling on your phone and notice it's taking up a considerable amount of your time, you may be ready for a digital detox. What do you think that is a digital detox? Put your phone away. Yeah. (laughs) I just think of like withdrawals. No, (laughs) I can't do it. (laughs) So this is like you're intentionally reducing the amount of screen time on your devices. And I would also add, on social media, you could do a cleanup of the accounts that you follow. Just unfollow things that aren't bringing you anything positive. Maybe it's celebrities or accounts that you're like comparing yourself to or making you feel bad that you're not like that perfect mom making Christmas tree shaped quesadillas or whatever the, <laughs> whatever the latest thing was. I'm like, what did I see recently that was impossible? But yeah, just it's not bringing you joy. Like maybe we need a break. So why you might need a digital detox, you're just too much time online um, and screens can cause some negative effects. And I, I feel like I see this in my kids and myself. You might think about your own life as we go through this list, but um, self-image problems, low self-esteem, even sleep problems. We talked about that in episode 71. The blue light can really affect uh, falling asleep. Depression and anxiety, even weight gain or unhealthy eating, a lack of exercise, lack of time management, and work ethics problems, you know, I think, especially if you're in a position where you're setting your schedule mm-hmm. and you're getting your stuff done, that can be a challenge to make sure that you're you're focused. And I just wonder sometimes about our kids, like, how are they going to learn? Like, I go to a place and every kid has their phone in their back yeah. pocket while they're working. Mm-hmm. And they like, it's like, pop, pop this right out. Like, I can't remember where I was. She had this new case cover 
and it was um designed to be horizontal okay with a piece that actually fit in her back jeans pocket oh my gosh and so then you're just like you pop it out so it just stays right there and doesn't fall out okay. it was like <laughs> okay so hello so kitty it's always with you yeah always with you in your back pocket but it's like hmm you're at work but I use my phone for work so it's really difficult but right to justify to s- and, and to separate those two like this is my work time now this is my I saw Social my daughter time. was, um, and this is bad. Sorry, Ivory, but um, <laughs> <laughs> she was taking her final exam. They're online. She had her phone open and was, had a movie playing at the same time while she's on her laptop taking an taking exam. Taking a final? Yes, taking a final. She <laughs> did get an A, guys. She did get an A. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But I'm just like, this is too much. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. So you can't carry those bad habits into your future job. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That would be tricky to justify that at at the (laughs) teller line. Um, So there are definitely benefits of a digital detox of taking a break or setting some boundaries. It can help improve your quality of life. It can help you calm down and feel confident, be more productive, feel better about yourself, get healthier, sleep better. And these are all great habits that we talk about all the time. So if you can... Take a brave look at your phone usage. <laughs> um, I know my phone likes to tell me uh, mm-hmm. how long I've been on my phone that day. And I do use it almost exclusively as my work phone as well. So when you see that like nine hour on your phone pop yeah. up, it's like, wow, that that's a lot. Do you but get the breakdown of which apps you're using? I don't see that. Okay. Do you see that on I get Android? a breakdown, and so sometimes my Facebook is a little bit high, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, I need to slow down on yeah. that. So I know there are apps to track your usage, but also, on, at least on iPhones, under uh, screen time, you can put timers on different apps oh, okay. or categories. So I could say social media category mm-hmm. is limited to this amount of time. Or if you know you have a problem with, like, I don't know what's cool anymore. Candy Crush is probably not cool. But, you know, whatever <laughs> app it is that's taking up your time, it just gives you an alert. You know, you're you're an adult. You can override it. It's not like it's, like, shuts down completely. But it's enough right. to jog your brain to say, like, oh, kind of snap out of this scrolling. You've been on this for however long. So another tip to get started, pay attention to the times when you use your phone. Is it out of boredom? Do you feel like you're missing out on something so you got online or does it make you feel better or worse after you've been on your phone? Uh, Schedule a break. Try keeping it out of sight or in another room. Like I'm going to take a conscious break. Maybe like this is a time I just want to, like we talked about focusing on reading or or something else that we want to do and I'm going to, I'm going to replace it with something else. Um, Again, using the apps to track your usage, disconnect at night before bedtime. We talked about this also giving yourself and your brain time to relax before bed and then turn off those notifications. That's something I do immediately upon getting a new phone. I do not want to get an alert every time that person I don't keep in touch with with high school posts something. Yeah, I just don't I have my need to do know. not disturb set every day, 11 PM. That's my cutoff. Do not, I don't want to hear about it. Nope. Yep. So I think it's good to set those boundaries and just recognize, you know, when is the detox? And I think maybe the new year is a great time to start a digital detox. Let us know if you try it. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was The Perfect Bite.